Uh, good evening. Welcome. We're live on Facebook. Um, welcome to the Brugaders League of Beer and Comics episode 50, the big 5 0. Um, um, we are, yeah, I'm Jeff, even though it says David right below my name, but we'll come to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, to um, on the on my far on my far right is Colin, who's my uh, co-host, and uh, we are joined by uh, David Craner, who is the creator and writer of Glass City Comics. So, um, hello, hi. What is Glass Good City? Good to have you. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here. Finally, because I missed last week, unfortunately. But <laughs> yeah, well, it'd been nice to have you on last week as well. I was a bit sad that you could make it. We had um, we had a. And Louise and Albie from the Little Shop of Heroes, a local comic shop in Dunfermline. Um, but it was oh, a really right. it was a nice little episode actually, where we talked a lot about um, um, quite a lot about how comic distribution works in the UK, <laughs> which was quite uh, it was quite a fascinating wee experience actually. And um, I don't know um, before we before we go into anything, I thought it was quite in, quite incredible was um, say there was a big issue with DC last week, which seems to have been resolved. It result it was resolved quite quickly after we came off air. <clears throat> Which was, um, um, maybe diamond, diamond, aye, diamond distributors. I, I, it was yeah. going crazy. And all, all the um, the Facebook groups about comics. I, I don't really know what it was. It was, um, but I, 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 I've got no idea. But yeah, everybody was posting about it and talking about it. So I, we did check out episode forty nine because uh, we talked about it for about twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all the information is on episode forty nine. <laughs> it seems like yeah, it's been. And- Comic distribution for us, for small press guys, is basically, you know, loads of envelopes, <laughs> dozens and dozens of envelopes, and <laughs> nights of, um, <laughs> you know, writing addresses and putting stamps. And I'll, uh, I'll need to find out where, where you got those <laughs> envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll warn you now. I ordered someone on uh, Amazon like a few weeks ago for for a Kickstarter, and they took ages to come. I mean, like mm. three weeks. So um, I don't know if right. it's just you know they've dried up. You, everybody's on Kickstarter. <laughs> is that why you asked? Is that why you borrowed some of me? Yeah, I got some from you because I just couldn't get them. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're about to enter a really bizarre world, David. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm a bizarre guy, so I think I'll I'll, I'll fit in just nicely. Yeah, at the next <laughs> Comic Con that both of you are at. Myself and wait. the other guys will obviously, um, you know, initiate you properly. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I should be excited or scared here. <laughs> I've, I've managed through the privilege of knowing knowing Colin and running this podcast. I've got to, um, I've got to meet some of the the, the sort of the, the Scottish comic collective, and it, that does seem quite terrifying. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to. It. I honestly can't wait for the next for the for Comic Cons to start yeah. um, and get a table. I'm really looking forward to. It. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, what will you be bringing to that uh, those Comic Cons, David? Well, I'll hopefully, be bringing uh, Volume One of Glass City Comics: The Story of a Missing Girl. Yeah. Um, hopefully, ideally, because I don't think I'll have anything else to bring. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so um, Glass City um, is set slightly in the future, I believe. Yeah, yeah. In a in a, a city that is kind of loosely based on Glasgow. Um, yeah, that's what I know of the story. As you said, it's about a missing girl and some some detectives that kind of go on the trail of this this missing person. But as far as I know, there's a kind of parallel story, which is one of the detectives' daughters went missing a number of years earlier. I believe exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, 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 Glass City Comics is um, it, Glass City Comics will hopefully release lots of um, different storylines, all based within the same city. So, the one that's getting released just now is the story of a missing girl, which is based or is set sorry a hundred years in the future. Um, but all other storylines won't necessarily be based in the same time scale or the time frame, but they'll be based in the same city. Um, so each story, not all of them will intertwine with one another. Some will, some won't. Um, but so Glass City, the one that's going to reach us now, sorry, the story of a missing girl, will hopefully be told over a maximum of three parts. Uh, and yeah, it's a, a detective, Gabriel Gatti, uh, is mourning the loss of his daughter five years later. He's, he, he signs up to, a, or he, 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 he accepts a, a, a case to go and see um, a, another girl that's gone missing. 
and the similarities are just too too much like his own, and that sets him on the course to kind of find out what happened to his own daughter. Um, where did you get the? Where does the sort of inspiration for the story come from? Um, so the inspiration for this story comes from. Um, have you ever seen the film Eight Millimeter by Nicola, with Nicolas Cage? I know of it. Um, mm. So it's a very graphic. I remember watching it. I mean, it's, a, it's an old film. Well, I say old film. It's probably like nineties, kind of maybe early two mm. thousands if we're lucky. Um, but I think probably mid nineties. And I can remember watching that as a as a young guy, maybe seventeen, eighteen, and being slightly disturbed by it. <laughs> and um, so I wanted to write something that had that kind of feel. Um, and so that's kind of it's, it's not it's not it's not based on the same storyline as that, but it's um, it, it's supposed to have that kind of sinister, dark. Uh, kind of feel about it, and um, so yeah, that's that's kind of where the, the story comes from. Amazing, um, yeah, um, it it looks really. Um, I'm, I'm, I've had a look at your Kickstarter ad back, and I'm, I just think the um, you know, it's coming. It, it looks stunning. Like if if people haven't seen some of the art, uh, I'll try and share some up just now from your. I'll try and share some images from your Kickstarter page as you're as you're chatting through. Yeah. These. Um, Who's your artist, and how did you come so up the with artist is, a really awesome so, one? Oh, he's amazing. So the artist is Roman Gubski, and he, um, you know, I always get this wrong. He's either from Costa Rica or Puerto Rico. I'm not Costa Rica or Puerto Rico. I'm never too sure which one. I keep getting them mixed up. Um, but he's he's a, he's Russian originally, I believe, um, and he's just fantastic. Um, he, he's new on the scene, but he's doing lots and lots uh, of other comic books, and you know if. if if you're a fan of comic books and you like his artwork, I would check him out. His um, Instagram is at Roman Scribble Stuff. Um, and you'll be able to get links to all the work that he's done just now. And I was very lucky, I think, to get to get Roman. And he's done, he's done really, me and him have worked really well together for the past kind of year, doing the first kind of 20 or 28 pages. Um, and now, hopefully, we're going to, well, obviously, we will, we'll now finish the rest of this volume together. Um, he's he's great to work with. He's dead down the earth, dead calm, and he's, he's he, his artwork speaks for himself. Basically, he's, he's fantastic. What did, I, I, wanted, yeah, I, I just wanted to bring that up because um, I, I obviously had read that um, Roman wasn't from what <coughs> uh, was was from somewhere um, not within the UK, and um, yeah. I think he's the, the style and obviously have, having spent quite a lot of time in Glasgow and Scottish cities and sort of. That kind of unique grey and dark bluey kind of um, mm-hmm. um, kind of color scheme is in the comics is amazing. He's he's captured something quite phenomenal, despite to my knowledge not having really been in. No, in, what, in, what he, what he said there is one uh, in the UK environment or in Glasgow in general. What he said one day was um, he says take some pictures of Glasgow and show me what it's like. Okay. So I was like, okay, no bother. So I went into Glasgow one day with my mobile phone and I just started snapping hundreds of pictures and I just send them all off to him on Messenger. And that's where he's got the idea. That's where he's, he's kind of seen it from. Um, I, I, I Googled some images as well and sent them off to him as well. And he, he's amazing. You know, I, I give him a, a, a little panel description and he comes back and he's just he's just always spot on. He's, he's, he, is, he is amazing. I'm interested in the setting, being kind of in the future. Um, what mm. kind of technology or, or differences are we going to mm. see between now and then? <laughs> so, I mean, the, the biggest kind of technologies are, are I think, are the one that you'll see most is um, everyone uh, flies around in a drone. Um, so it's all kind of drone, tech, drone cars and all that thing. So, you know, there's, there's, you can obviously drive on the road as well, but Glasgow and Glass City are, um, is, is, is so big and so tall. That, uh, everyone has to, there's landing pads and everything in the sides of all the buildings and stuff. Um, so it's drone technology. Uh, mobile phones are, are, are still a part of it, but it just controls everything that you do. You can pretty much hook up to every single other device that's close by, whether it be a camera, whether it be, you know, anything, you're, uh, everything basically. You can get everyone's social media on your phone and all that kind of stuff. Um, because they're police officers, 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 you see, so they've got, uh, you know, high tech mobile phones they call i call them handhelds and mm-hmm. so they're not called a mobile phone basically and so that's the kind of only really major two kind of um futuristic things that are really going on 
Well, well, there's also there's a scene where he goes into a bar and he asks for a pod for one, and it's just a a place that you can self isolate, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, know, and that was totally by accident. I didn't realise that, but I'm going to incorporate the the virus into the storyline at some point. I think. Uh, I think obviously I'll, I'll exaggerate it. I'll make it kind of like a five year virus or whatever, and then um, I have that as a evidence of it. So you go into the the pub. And you just send this wee isolation booth and it closes you off and you can check all your social media in this pod as it all is coming as you're sitting there drinking by yourself. <laughs> it's because it's, that doesn't sound massively far away in terms of like, mm. um, I don't know about the, what I love about sci-fi in general is it is just a, you know, sometimes particularly things like Blade Runner and that, it's that kind of, what well, what, you know, if we, if we, follow the course where we're at just now what what do we you know what do we hypothesize well um could 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 emerge in 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 regards to technology and um it's, it's interesting what you know from particularly things in the 70s 80s and 90s what what has emerged as like sort of guesses in the future mm -hmm. what hasn't but then also like yeah just it's just i, I find that kind of thing quite fascinating anyway i think things like self-isolation pods that you can you can pull up your uh, your 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 mobile phone's content it isn't too far away. I mean, I just um I only yeah. found to do that last week. I think that's a proper for that screen share thing I did with your uh, your comic. That's the first time I've ever. Yeah. Like, that's the first time we've done. <laughs> um, but you know, there's no there's no. Yeah. Reason, like, I do a lot of stuff on my phone now. Like I'll watch. Uh, um, I've got one of those Chrome Chromecasts, and it's basically just mm. I don't know if anyone else has got these, and I'm. I, I just discovered what um, Lincoln hotspotting was the other day with your phone, and I, f I felt like I stepped into the future and got a big rip. My eleven-year-old ripping. It's like, no, we've always had that. <laughs> like, when I when I clicked onto the link for for here to just, just now, it, it says um, you know you open with Google Chrome or open with Samsung Internet, and I thought, okay, cool, I'll do Samsung Internet, and I clicked onto it, and it only gave me the option of Google Chrome, mm -hmm. and then it came up Google Chrome has blocked your microphone and your camera change it in the settings, and I'm like, oh, no, how do I do this? And, yeah, I managed to do it dead easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, everyone is becoming really quite, uh, yeah. either technology is becoming easier to use or we're all becoming a lot more aware of, of, yeah. of how to use it. You're having to and use it, right. yes. Because yeah. my, my mum's never done FaceTime or anything until lockdown, you know, and it's mm -hmm. never gone near anything other than phoning or texting. Even texting's know, yeah. a new thing to her. My favourite thing that is existing just now, I don't know if Colin's got this thing, is, it has this as well. My favourite thing is that advert for Microsoft Teams, which has, like, the, the primary school in England teach it, you know, like, she's a teacher and she's, it's, like, mm. interacting and they're all, like, like bringing pictures that they've drawn to the screen and stuff like that. It's all really cool. However, uh, in Scottish high schools, they've blocked that feature so you, that children can't, children can't um, share their camera. So it's like it's just amazing that Microsoft is advertising yeah, the, 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 rea yeah. the reality is something else. Yeah. Yeah, even when you've, even when you've got all computer. these features available, <laughs> it just means people click on buttons and suddenly you're you know recording or screen sharing or sometimes being yeah. activated on the screen takes over. You know, yeah. so yeah. it's awful. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be uh, scary in some Scottish schools, that's for sure. Can you imagine some of that? Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, when you suddenly uh, <laughs> share, the, share their browser window. No, I don't. <laughs> that's not what you want. Yeah. Uh, be, uh, that's scary stuff. I always remember um, it was Iron Man 2 when he's in the courtroom and uh, he pulls out his phone, Tony Stark, and he starts um, getting everything. Getting, getting, you know, I think it's, it's a hammer, the, the hammer guy. And he's, yeah. uh, he's saying, oh, that's technology, blah, blah, blah. And then Tony Stark pulls out his phone and, and takes over the screen and stuff. And that's kind of the way it is just now. That can, yeah. that can happen right now. Yeah, totally. And that was back in 2010, 2011. Yeah, it wasn't so. long ago. Like, well, it was 10 years ago. <laughs> it doesn't feel like yeah, it. I, I know. It's... Iron um, Man 1 was good. Right, before we move on, like, what? I, I'm almost, like, halfway through my beer and I can't think of what it was. What, Colin, what are you drinking tonight? Me, I've uh, got another... Inner Bay Brewery. This is Jet. So this is their 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 stout, their Imperial stout. So it's a strong one. Nine and a half percent. It's awesome. It's great. Nine and a half percent. Nine and a half. Standing yeah. beer. Actually. It's very good. I have to say. It doesn't. You would would never think it was as strong as that. It's tastes like any right. you know. 
That's my D and D beer. It's Jet. Yeah, it's it's good though. I really like it. It's nice sort of coffee. You play Dungeons and well. Dragons. Uh, occasionally, but, but whenever when, whenever <laughs> I, whenever I'm uh, DMing, um, since I started DMing in the last year or so, I've always bought um, Inner Bay Jet to accompany my sessions. I don't know why. But, um, well, sorry, what, what's DM? What's DMing? Sorry. Uh, sorry. Whenever I'm Dungeon Master. Whenever, ah, I'm right, running, right, right. whenever I'm running the game, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll drink That's Jet. Right. So I, did, I think I did it on the first night I ran the game, and I was like, yeah, this is going to be my, my, my thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jeff is the uber geek of the team. Yeah. He's into all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think I'm going to Jet the beer. Um, I'm kind of jealous that you've got that, Paul. <laughs> mm, so am I actually that, I, I'll look out for that my wife would uh, kill me if she um, she seen the percentage on that <laughs> just a couple of years we had you know <laughs> we really are, we're quite lucky Inner Bay are a local brewery they're based in Inverkeithen um, so even though that's quite a, an imperial um, an imperial beer it's still relatively in, inexpensive in this area isn't it maybe mm. about £3 for that bottle Colin yeah I think so yeah yeah not bad I am drinking uh, a Brewdog Classic. Where am I? Hold on. Here we go. Yeah. The beer that started all, Punk IPA. Yeah. I love these beers. I just I just love everything about it. I just love the, uh, the look of the can. I love the taste of the beer. I love that it's 5.6%, which is still pretty <laughs> high, but not too much. Yeah. Um, and it's just, a, it's just a nice IPA. I just I just really, really like it. Plus, they sell them down the road in the Scotland shop, so it's nice to pick up <laughs> a couple of cans. Yeah, easy to get. Um, very palatable range of beers. Very palatable. I do have a wee uh, Broughton sitting by my side. Oh, oh, oh. Is, uh, it's Broughton. I like that one. They've got that one. There's, they've got one called the <laughs> Hopopotamus that Broughton do as well. Uh, that's, that's, that's a nice one. I, like uh, I do. I, I, I'm, I'm quite, I want to say, snobbish about my beer. I do like to uh, try and always drink Scottish. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's kind of something I try and do all the time. I think, we're, I think we're really lucky in Scotland. Um, I, I imagine wherever you are in the UK, you could probably say you're really lucky. But um, mm. I do definitely think that in Scotland, we're really lucky with our craft beers. I, I feel like we're spoiled in Fife, but then that's only because we live in Fife. Mm. So I imagine if we were in Glasgow or um, Lothian or up, up north, we would be saying the same thing, just with different breweries. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's one of the gr fastest growing industries um, over the first mm. five years. It's quite interesting yeah, to see how many folk think. Um, a, I, I really like Brewdog, and I, I had a really interesting conversation quite early on. Um, we've our local craft beer shop, the craft, the Caledonia Craft Beer Merchant. Um, they don't sell any Brewdog, um, and I was in a conversation with Colin where he had asked him if was there any particular reason, and he said it was just to do with them. Um, it wasn't that there, you know. Um, I think there seems to be quite a a, a strange. Particularly in the sort of the craft beer circles, there seems to be almost like a snobbish reaction to Brewdog, as because it's become mm. quite big and you can get it in loads of supermarkets, it's all of a sudden not very good. Whereas, um, yeah. Colin that runs the craft beer uh, shop that we go to was saying that um, it's not necessarily the case. It's just he can't, you know, when you can go into a supermarket and buy a can of Brewdog for two pound, he can't he can't make up the same margin that the supermarket would make. Yeah. So, it doesn't make sense. And there's a couple of brewer, there's a couple of beers and breweries that have become more established in our area that he no longer stocks for the same reason. So like Stuart Bruin, which was mm. a relatively niche this time last year, is now no longer stocked at all. By yeah. The... Stuart Bruin has some cracking beers as well. Um, that, that, that's quite common, unfortunately. Uh, Brewdog is an interesting case, actually, because Brewdog, when they first come out, so they, they claim to be the, the, the craft beer that kind of started the whole craft beer revolution in mm -hmm. Scotland um, and it became huge and there's, um, there's like, I think it's a craft beer association that are trying to, I don't know, pass a law that says you can only be a certain size mm -hmm. in order to be a craft beer That's right, and yeah. yeah and of course Brewdog are fighting <clears throat> against that because yeah. um, Brewdog you know and it's it's, it's, it's almost you know it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a kind of two-sided coin there. it's a shame for both really because obviously Brew dogs for me anyway. It's a nice beer. They've got a lot of good beers out there, and um, but they are so big that can they really be classed as a craft beer? Who knows? I love it. Um, I, I, do, I do love the argument. I'm, I'm in a couple of Facebook groups based around craft beer, and there's similar debates about what you can what based on your brewery size and when you become like a 
you know, when's a microbrewery, a macrobrewery, and when's a macrobrewery, oh, yeah. a brewery, and it's all, it's, it's quite, um, so it's, I think, I think there's similar, I, I think there's a, maybe a similar issue where quite well-established craft beers are still calling themselves microbreweries because there's a connotation of sort of premium, like, I, I think there's yeah. a, yeah, there's a, there's an association with those kind of beers that is, that's quite prestigious, so. You know, if you if you can sell yourself, if you can sell your product as a locally sourced product, when you're yeah. in the market, people are like more likely to buy your stuff. So yeah, they're also more likely to pay a little bit more for it. Not a great deal more, but um, they do they do I kind of people do appreciate the, uh, the 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 local homegrown everything at the moment. To be honest, yeah. uh, I notice it and certainly when I work in because I'm working at obviously a, a restaurant, a hotel, um, and yeah, you know, a lot of people are all looking for. You know, locally sourced produce from right across the board, from your beer uh, to to the Fuji on the plate. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big it's a big thing. It's also a big selling point just now. If you jump on that bandwagon, um, it's a big selling point. Whether or not that changes when everything gets back on, I doubt it, right enough. But um, aye, that's definitely a big thing. Mm-hmm. I wonder if there's a bit of a parallel as well with uh, like comics. You know, whether you're a professional creator or, or an mm-hmm. amateur. When are you Indian? When are you kind of whatever the opposite mm. of India is? Yeah, that's definitely you know, at what that point happens. do you mainstream? Would you call them mainstream yeah. comics? Mainstream, I suppose. You know, because yeah. we've, we've talked in the past about uh, like John Lee's, for example. You know, and he's producing his own stuff, his own creator own stuff, but then he's also written, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm. You know, so but he's not kind of constantly doing stuff for big publishers. Um, so, you know, where do these do we need categories? I don't know. I, I think it's it's a fascinating. I, when we had uh, Albie and Louise on last week, Albie when um, Albie was describing the issues with DC and the, how comic shops were going to possibly have difficulties getting access to DC titles in the UK, he was saying about like that essentially meant like roughly speaking, DC was thirty percent rough of, of of most comic book like sales. Um, Marvel were the other thirty percent, roughly, and then did they say? And then an image were I can't remember how, the exact numbers they gave, but it was basically like Marvel thirty, DC thirty. I want to say, uh, I'm sorry, Albie, if you're listening, you're like, that's not what I said. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think you said image maybe made up ten percent ish, and then everyone else had a share of the the remaining pot of the rest. Um, and uh, I was, I thought I was quite fascinating. So also, when he was saying that, he was saying that in relation to the fact that if, if British comic shops were no longer able to get a reliable source of DC, that potentially meant thirty of, of the weekly comic trade. That was a huge chunk of their profits and and their custom mm-hmm. potentially being affected. Uh, it would be interesting to see when does a like I don't know, I don't know about Colin, but I always think of Marvel, DC, possibly Image being like. The mainstream, and then mm. one else kind of being in the independent. Yeah, yeah. That, that's my personal opinion because people would then probably say, "No, nah, but you're forgetting about DC Thompson, and you're forgetting about um, mm. you're forgetting about a uh, aftershock and boom mm. and all these relatively big guys. Mm. Got, and guys have got things like Power Rangers, and I don't know. Call, what's your thoughts? Yeah. On- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a tough one to call, and like I said, do we really need these sort of categories? Yeah, yeah. Because the the world is changing, <laughs> and even quicker in the last few months. But I mean, the way that we can sell comics, um, online to a huge audience, you know, I get since lockdown, I've made more through online sales than I've ever made in previous years. It's been not massively busy, but significantly busy than, than you know previous months or years, um, and I'm always constantly surprised about where I'm sending stuff to, yeah. which could be you know a lot of people in America, a few in Australia and places, and then you you get the odd one that's like Vanuatu, which is a wee island in the middle of the Pacific. And you think how the hell did anybody hear about wow. the comic? Yeah. You know, and it, and it's not like it's <laughs> Jimmy McLeod or something that's that's buying the comic. Somebody with a local sounding name, you know, and, and yeah. you just wonder how did that happen? Um, and 
uh, suddenly, you know, I think you mentioned Denmark, um, but Denmark and uh, Finland, no Norway, I seem to get a lot of sales there as well. And I don't know mm. why, I don't know. I would have th thought that's come about. Um, I would have thought there would have been, I don't know, when you say like Finland and stuff like that, is there maybe an affinity with like, I know you've just done the Orzo story, is there maybe just... Perhaps that, the uh, wartime stuff maybe yeah. still has a, yeah, actually I think there is a quite a Nordic interest in the war, maybe perhaps not as much as Britain has, you know, uh, and, and a fascination with World War Two in particular, but I think, um, yeah, some of the Nordic countries do. So maybe that's, that's I think with you've got you know when, when you've got a tool like what we're doing right now when you know you get Facebook and you've got Instagram and you've got you, even just if you talk Kickstarter you know I mean the, all these things are, are accessible to everyone with a mobile phone and a, and, a, and a internet access so it just takes when, once one person starts to kind of click on about that um, it just spreads like a spider web you know it's just and, and and everyone starts and everyone starts to see it. So the world is a smaller, smaller place now. It is global. Um, that's just the way the world is right now. All this, you know, closing borders and stuff and blah blah blah. It's never going to work because we're all global anyway. Mm -hmm. And the way the lockdown at the moment, obviously everyone you know stuck indoors, so to speak. Um, it, it's created things like what we're doing right now, uh, yeah. a podcast, you know, live, and um, for anyone in the world could watch us right now. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and see as it were instantly recognisable, and and that's that that alone is obviously an amazing thing, and I think that makes um, it just makes the world a smaller place, which makes it easier to 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 to, to get to get your stuff out there. And it's not just comic books; it's the same for absolutely everything. It's the same yeah. for you know learning. You know, learning in general. These two guys are, for, are teachers, obviously, so you just can pick up you know um, teaching methods all over the world just in a, in a blink of an eye in a second just by reaching out to people i think the biggest thing is is to reach out to people once you start to you know to reach out and you know like post interact with people put yourself out there and um, people will pay attention I, you, I, I, I find lockdown totally crazy for that um, um traditionally um the Brugger's podcast is usually me calling pre-lockdown it was me and Colin sitting together in the same space chatting about the beers and comics that we've read in that area and there's still an element of that we um we will kind of give a quick nod to what we've read and what we're drinking and stuff like that but um we, we, what, the, the podcast has kind of shifted slightly just um to accommodate lockdown and like you say it's just putting things out there it's offering and we've had some really fascinating folk in the last wee while um, yeah it's quite a few Americans in the last yeah. couple of weeks which has yeah. been incredible we did, we did these dropping podcasts where it was just basically we and Colin sat there and were like, if you want to come in, just here's the link and, and let us know what you think. And we had um, um had some really fascinating stuff, uh, which is th again things you wouldn't um, people you would normally interact with because you know we're not we're not part of the the north. For example, um, oh, the guy's name escapes me, but there was a, we had a guy. I'll, I'll have to put his link back up, but. Um, the, the avid guardians guy that we had a couple weeks mm. ago Colin, um the guy that came on joined us uh, two weeks ago who uh, had um who has a comic about um a, a rock band that are using their uh, their music to combat a like a like a, a, a regime it was it had a total bill and ted for bill and ted mixed with the avengers vibe it was really really smart uh, <laughs> was like, that you, know, awesome. you would have never heard about that i don't think because we're not part of the northeastern comic book scene Mm -hmm. in, in America, you know, he's um, doing a lot of the conventions in that corner of the world, but in the hope that he gets picked up by somebody bigger, but like, you know, mm -hmm. in the same way that maybe we would be overlooked, you know, the Scottish comic scene might get overlooked elsewhere, but now oh, it's, of course. it's promoted a weird international community of folk just blethering and sharing ideas for their comics. So I always, always go back to Alex DeLuca. I've made really good friends with a guy in California, uh, Alex DeLuca, who writes a series called Dragon Whisperer. And genuinely, like he's just become my mate because he he was on the show, and then we, you know, and then I backed one of his comics. He's backed mine, and we're just kind of blethering most days. Mm -hmm. Are you, you know, I get I wake up to an email go to him, what are you doing, man? And it's like well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for, for those watching from abroad, blethering means just chatter, chat, yeah. chatter. It's a Scottish a blether, one. Chatter, chatter. I did, I did blether. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing. I mean, my pal, my best man, actually, he's um, he's living in Australia now, and um, we're in a big group chat uh, just for men. It's called uh, on WhatsApp, 
and um, he's he's in that chat as well. And you know, he's obviously uh, I think twelve hours ahead or seven hours ahead. I'm not too sure, but he's obviously a different time zone anyway. Um, and it's great instant messaging straight away. You know, just back and forward chatting away, and, it, and it's fantastic. You can reach the other side of the world in a second as long as the person you're reaching is paying attention to the messages they're receiving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when we had Brendan Wright um, oh, in New, 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 New Zealand a couple of weeks ago, um, and he'd just gotten up in the morning, you know, and kind of just seen that his mate was on our podcast and decided to join in. <laughs> <laughs> was he having beer at that time in the morning? <laughs> Which is funny because it was <laughs> normally, I said that before, we normally try and keep the podcast to 45 minutes to an hour. Um, because yeah. if we go to more than that, we tend to be in our second or third beers, and it starts to just go a bit off piece. Sure shape. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Brendan joined us about an hour into that episode. We had a uh, Banksy, <laughs> the editor for the the, the seventy seven comic. Um, we had him on, and Brendan's an artist on that. And um, it was I actually that, that was probably my, the, the, one of the funniest podcasts we've done in a while. Brendan joined us. <laughs> As I say, it was super early in the morning for him. He didn't quite know what was going on. And um, there's, there's Steve, um, chatting to him. Drunk Scots folk, just like yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and B- and B- Binksy was moving furniture in the background oh. and, and stuff. Yeah, Binksy, <laughs> I think Binksy totally gave his wife that he was going to go an hour. He went more than an yeah. hour. She'd come in and he helped me move this couch. So he didn't turn his camera off, but he just started moving stuff around. And it was, it was, it was brilliant. It was, but it was great. Um, where uh, um, I did shout my, I want to give my beer a quick shout just because mm. it's good. Um, I'm drinking Elgin, um, which is a summer ale by Brewshed in Lane Kilns, who are a, a lovely local brewer. Um, this is a really nice kind of, I think there's a, um, it's a summer ale, so there's a lot of fruit in there, and it's just really nice. It's only 4%. So um, when you guys are sitting there with your 5% and 9%, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Bruce had a really good brewery for that. They do a lot of low alcohol kind of summery chill beer, which is really, really nice. And um, uh, what I really like about them is whenever I drink their beer, it always just reminds me of when we were down there calling last year. And Yeah, that was, I, I, yeah. especially <laughs> that one, yeah, that, that summery one when we were sitting out in the garden and stuff. Dave, um, there's something we're, we're planning to do. We've done this already at, at uh, Comic Con already, but... Um, when Comic Con start to you know happen again, we're going to be doing a beer swap. So basically, we'll okay. bring we'll we'll get some local beer from our neck of the woods, and we'll hopefully get other comic creators to do the same and do a beer swap. So we'll like sounds good to at, me. Say say you're at Glasgow Comic Con, and we'll bring a couple of beers, and you give us a couple of beers that we wouldn't normally get in our local right. area. So, you know what? There's a wee brewery not so far from me actually called Lennox Brewery. Um, I've not had any of them, but the guy's sister works for us. Um, so, mm-hmm. aye, I'll bring stuff like that along. That'd be ideal. I'll definitely get some proper local. Brew Dog, I wouldn't really class as a local beer, you know. Um, <laughs> same with Drygate, for example. Drygate's obviously Glasgow. I like Drygate yeah. stuff. It's nice, but it's not It's not the most of local. Aye, but it's stuff that's kind of harder to get outside your local area. Yeah. The distribution. Is the fault, yeah. I may have got this wrong, and I'm, they slap me in the wrists. Um, at a social distance, if you need to, but um, is it Vault City that are Gla- are they Glasgow based? Vault City. Vault, Vault City. is a Vault City. Um, Vault. Mm. I know of them, but I can't see where they are. I had um, I had one of their, uh, I had a sour by them the other day. I wanted to give a shout out to. Let me double check where they're from. Uh, uh, I'm not too sure. I, I, where can you get them? Can you get them in Scotland? I might have seen them today actually. Uh, no, they're quite niche. I, I, if you could, if if you can get them in Scotland, go for it. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you think that I do. Think I'll look out. Yeah, I'm just See, and the and the crew, and um, I asked actually the ninety nine percent of the beers I stock are all Scottish. Mm-hmm. Um, I got rid of all the kind of Heineken and um, Fosters and all that kind of stuff. Stella, and yeah. uh, I brought in all all Scottish stuff. Um, so it's like West Brewery predominantly on the mm-hmm. taps. Um, and then in the fridge, I did have brew dog stuff in the fridge, but I took all that out actually. Um, and there's uh, Drygate, Williams Brothers, they're kind of the, the bigger ones to be fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it'd be nice to, only only because it's easier to get them from the, my supplier that I get. Of course, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, but there's lots of it. Yeah, yeah. there's the definitely lots of stuff down my way. Lennox Brewery's one. Um, what's the other one? There's another cracking. Oh, well, that's terrible. I can't remember. You can get them in Lidl, actually. My pal actually does the graphics for them. Um, oh, that's terrible. Lock there Woman Brewery, in fact. Yeah, there is a Lock Woman. Yeah. The Barton or something. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So, um, I said, well, they may have moved. Um, my pal does the does the graphic design for that, for the cans. And, uh, yeah. I am. I was in uh, I was in Lidl the other day, and they have Seventy One Brewing, which is another brewery I associate with when me and Colin first started to show up, and we were going to the Caledonian Craft Beer Market. They're based in Dundee, but they they now have a line of beers that you can get in places like Lidl, Aldi, and stuff like that. It's it's incredible, actually. Um, they do a really mm. awesome out. That's like one of my favourite beers called Breakfast Out. A breakfast toast, it's called, sorry. Um, it's really good. Uh, I, um, it's gone a bit bananas, the whole craft beer thing, isn't it? Like, um, so is Vault, have you figured out, is Vault beer from Glasgow? Or? I believe they are, um, but um, I, I, I don't want to say I or no, just in case. I've, I also don't want to be rude and be doing loads of Googling while you're chatting to me. But um, <laughs> yeah, you did, um, a, a wee while ago, we did a, they did an Iron Brew Sour, which I've just had. Um, I, p- I picked up a wee while ago, and um, I've just got. I've just I had it the other day, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is really really nice." Um, mm. um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not too sure how I feel about the kind of fruity beers yet. I've not properly moved into that style. My pals have. They're all. They're all about the fruity beer. Mm. Um, but I, I, I've kind of steered away from it a little bit. I think a fruit should be a cider. <laughs> or, yeah, it seems to be uh, massively popular in their local beer shop. I hear yeah. people asking for it all the time. For fruit yeah. beers, yeah, yeah, mm. all the time. I, I picked up one by accident just the other day, um, and I really enjoyed it. And it was the first one. <laughs> it's really the first one I've, I've had. So I was like, hmm. And you know, I gave it to Lisa, my wife, as well, and she kind of enjoyed it as well. So I was like, I'm always interested to find any alcohol that my wife likes. <laughs> I think when we first started this, I was very, I was kind of anti, not anti sour, but we we were trying sours and uh, um, we were trying sours and um, I remember us not being massively into them, Colin. Like I, I was picking up stuff because I thought, oh, that sounds amazing. And then we were both like, yeah. But um, recently I've had a few that have just been like, this is quality. Um, this is Evolve City. They did a, they did a chili. They did a, I can't remember. It was it was um, an orange chili, I think. It, it, it went like that, and I've never seen it again in the local beer shop. Um, but um, and then as I say, um, I had their uh, they did an iron brew sour, and then I'm, I'll go and dig it out now. Another, I want to say they're called Kraken Brewery. I'm going to go and get the beet can just now. But they did a they did an iron brew sour as well. I was like, oh my goodness, like. So mm. iron brewers are amazing. <laughs> well, uh, if I see one in the shop, I'll, I'll pick one up uh, just to give it a try. Can I just say a big shout out to, to Big Al? Cheers, yeah. Big Al. That's a Alan Murdoch. Interesting chat, guys. He's just yeah, that's nice to Cheers, Thank you. <laughs> um, oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, I also want to. Um, I also want to, I'm trying to the beers. I want to check. We need to. There's a couple of. I don't know if we would call them gateway beers, but there's a couple of kind of fruity beers that. Me and Colin have tried on the show and been like, "Aye, that's absolutely immense." And there are always beers mm. that I would go. We've done a few um, kind of pub crawls in our area um, um, in Dunfermline, where we've started at our local beer shop, and I've always pulled out, um, always pull out uh, Topaz, which is the, the done by the same brewery that um, does the beer that Colin's drinking just now, um, Inner Bay. Um, they do one called Topaz. It's got passion fruit in it, which is incredible, mm. um, and um, I, I'm a big fan of that one. Stuart do as well, Colin. The um, the first world problems. Mm. That's really mm. really great. Yeah, that's great got, like it feels, it tastes really great fruity. So um, that's that's Stuart brewery. Did you say the first world yeah. problems is Stuart brewery? I love. I see the you see the design on those cans. They're fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah, because they're, 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 they're like comic book basically. Yeah, 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 they yeah they they do. Do. It's a it's a really good beer as well. Though I totally recommend it, and uh, it's really great fruity. Um, Again, I'll, I'll give a bad shout out to me and Colin, but um, we we were the one of my total proudest moments on this podcast so far as we went to a really, really weird small um, beer festival last year, and we were genuinely like it was us and another guy were the only ones in the hall in the afternoon that we'd gone. It was like after the it was a it was a Sunday afternoon, and the and the, the beer festival had happened Friday Saturday, and for some reason nobody was there on the Sunday. But we had that uh, we had Stuart Bruins first world problems on cask and it was the only time that Stuart had ever done it. 
we were like, yeah, it was really <laughs> fun. It was a whole, whole bizarre afternoon. <laughs> that fun. Um, so what's uh, a? Uh, so, uh, go on, sorry. <clears throat> Oh no! I was just going to say I uh, I am dying to do a pub crawl again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the I can't wait for the pubs to open back up so we can so go to one. Just wait set really a bar really with a paint. Yeah, I was total. I, I was really really excited that um that we were possibly going to get beer gardens, and then it was kind mm-hmm. of not announced today, wasn't it? Like just it's not happening yet. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. yeah, two two three weeks. I think she's going to review it again. Mm. Um, my only worry about that is you've you seen, uh, you seen everybody queuing for Primark and everyone queuing for yeah. McDonald's and things. And my worry is that that is what they'll do when the pubs open up. Yeah. Um, uh, I just don't see how it's ever going to properly work. I think the best just to leave pubs until phase four and <laughs> take it that way. Or, you know, maybe, or maybe you have to, you can only have a drink if you're having something to eat. Something along those lines. Um, I can I can see it being really rather messy. I mean, I work in a pub. Yeah, I have it could, be, it could be. It could be. It could be a bit difficult aye. to manage. I can just. Yeah. Aye, difficult to manage for sure. I can see it being really really challenging as well with um, with with it, social distancing and the fact that you have to have, you know, mm. wait, um, Dunfermline's a really funny town in that we've got quite a lot of really nice pubs, but we none of them that off the top of my mind. When they start talking about opening uh, not outdoor spaces, thinking about Dunfermline, I was like, we don't really have many pubs with decent beer gardens. Um, and I've seen some really funny stuff in Edinburgh, for example, where like pubs that pubs have almost built beer gardens on the front of their buildings, and it is it just, mm. just like a bench and a table, and then like. <laughs> Like a box, or like a plant box, to try and differentiate between. Right. Uh, um, I was noticing as well, like if, if the pub in the street. Yeah, how, how's a pub going to open for four folk? Um, it's just, it's just not feasible, you know. So it's not feasible. <coughs> it's not going to. I mean, big spaces. For example, um, SWG Three in Glasgow. It's a huge, yeah. big, big venue. Um, I've never actually been in it, but it's huge. So places like that can open uh, fine. To be honest, <laughs> the crew in where I work, I can open no problem at all. Um, but my boss just isn't really up for it at all. My worry is you've got just folks sitting in the sun drinking. It's never that that those two things never work out well. Drink <laughs> and sun just don't work. <laughs> so for us, we yeah, we don't. That. I don't think it's a smart idea. We, I think we we'll just sit back and just wait, watch how it operates other places, and then take it for there. <laughs> <laughs> and do, do, just, just stay at home and enjoy a nice craft beer in your garden. Exactly. Get your phone out, the you know. Telly so, or whatever. Watch the telly. You can do some video chats with your family. You know, yeah. do that kind of thing. You can. You, you don't have to kiss and cuddle anyone. It's great. <laughs> so what's him? If I take us back, can I take us back to Glass City for a week for the last like five ten minutes? Is that right? You can, of course, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, before I do, can I just say, uh, Dev- uh, Devin Wright? Is uh, the guy behind Avant Guardians? I felt really mm. bad about not remembering the lad's name, but we went through a weird period of we maybe chatted to six or seven comic creators in a very short space of time over the last two and three weeks. Um, yeah, so um, Glass City is um, uh, Glass City is, is on Kickstarter right now and has been successfully funded. We bet they're still yeah. Is that right. Yep. So there's still um, 15 days to go. We're currently sitting at uh, 145 um, or 146 percent funded. Um, so, uh, so so we're good to go. If you back it now, you're guaranteed that you're going to get um, well the comic book basically. Um, yeah. So it will run until I think the third of July, um, and then after that, obviously we've still got 40 odd pages to go. Uh, so we'll start getting to work finishing them off, um, and then it'll hopefully get everything will get shipped out for kind of October. November the very latest, but we're aiming for October. And um, we've got, so. um, I've got this one at the moment, which is can I show you this? Can I show you <laughs> Amazing. So this is a, a uh, this is the first ever print, if you like, um, of Glass City and or the story of a missing girl, I should say. Um, <laughs> I take it in the camera, and there's only a hundred of these. Uh, there's only a hundred of these printed. Um, and they won't be printed like this again. This is basically the first 28 pages that we got done. 
Um, and so they're also available on the Kickstarter, but they're, like I say, they're a limited edition. So they want, these ones are actually about 15 quid, whereas the full graphic novel is um, only £12. Um, so you get more for your buck if you buy the, the, the full graphic novel, which is about 68 pages. It might be a little bit more than that, but it, it, 68 pages um, minimum anyway. Uh, there's lots of stuff on there. T-shirts too. <laughs> uh, this is actually my pal actually does this, uh, Locked Solid. Uh, you can find them on Facebook. It's L O K D Solid. Uh, you can find them on Facebook. He does lot. He'll 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 tailor make uh, t-shirts for you. Um, so yes, Glass City is live right now. Please go and check it out. Alistair Maxwell. I don't know if he's um he's um. Uh, uh, Ali Maxwell. Hello, Max. Bongo, and I'll see Susie as well. Hello, Susie, how are you? Beautiful folks checking us in. And, uh, Alan Big Al, shout out for Just For Men. I turned that earlier on, Al. <laughs> Just Your for WhatsApp Men. Trip, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my WhatsApp. See, exactly. They already know about it. They've asked if they can, get, uh, if they can jump into it, which we're not going to allow. Because <laughs> you well, don't want to be in it, trust me. I'm admittedly <laughs> right, right behind on my... Uh, Posting the audio versions of our podcasts, they haven't been. Um, they have. I, I was on another podcast uh, earlier this week. We were chatting about. Uh, there seems to be a general thing happening in the podcast where audio numbers are going down because people aren't commuting as much at the moment. So most people do their mm-hmm. podcasting while they're driving or on the bus. <clears throat> so, but we've all recognised like quite a high rise in like the videos. Like we, we're our podcast has been watched by about twice as many folk as possibly used to watch it you know um obviously it's all depending on like who we get on (laughs) 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 the thing is you guys are doing it every single week you know it's a lot to do every single week um there's log solid log solid (laughs) hello stan awesome (laughs) Uh, um you guys are doing every single week it's just it's not an easy thing to do you know so i I reckon you just keep what you are doing i think it's i think it's brilliant i'll I'll come back on in fact if you want i'll get back back on just at the end uh the end of the 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 run the campaign next couple of weeks it's up to you guys obviously um i just love beer in comics i I think also we, we want to um we really want to get um we've made so many like you were saying about making friends and like having socials and stuff when actually when we're, when like the pubs reopen and folk aren't being drunk in messes like we'd really really like to i think we've got road trips and road trips to do where we've just got folk we've met that we've like oh it'd be really really nice to go out and see yourself and fraser and callum laird as well um, um just um and actually a big part of our podcast was going to pubs in different towns and Meeting folk there, so we'll need to get you actually the three of us in a room at some point as well. Um, ah, yeah, that'd be great. I did get a total request as well. I'm going to add a wee banner here. Um, super, oh, I'm, I'm going to take that down now because I'm a spell bit of fight. Superhero bar well, fight. Well, this sounds interesting. While, while Jeff's doing that, I'll just say, um, Paul McGill, um, from next week, we're sell, selling advertising space on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that, Stan? Paul McGill gets called Stan just to let you Stan, know. Right, okay. Stan, <laughs> locksolid.com. <laughs> Shameless plug. He made you know. this t shirt, though. You, can, you, can't, you, can't, you can't say it's a bad thing. I, I'm, I'm wearing a, a t shirt made by my, uh, my pal Alan. It says Lethal Drizzle <laughs> visits Scotland. <laughs> Every, everybody's into it. Everyone, everyone. This is, this is what I've noticed. I mean, obviously, it's just a circle I'm in just now. Um, all my mates seem to be either uh, making comic books, uh, making T-shirts, doing podcasts, or building big sheds in their back garden. Oh, all of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> That's what everyone seems to be doing. You know, every 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 day, one of my, my pals is sticking up a picture of a, a shed. Not a shed; it's a summer house, basically. It's a place to get away for the wife mm. and kids. I think, yeah. um, in the back garden. I think I think I'm the only one so far that's not done that. But I, I do plan to. <laughs> my, my wife's been doing such phenomenal work in the garden, and I just um, I've got a cousin who I've got a cousin who does like garden furniture and stuff, and he said that in, a, in the next wee while, when things when when folks stop commissioning them to do bar garden bars and uh, summer says he's going to come out and do a wee bar for me so my wife's going to mm. hate that she's done all this work to make the garden look nice and i'm just going to have this alcoholic <laughs> <place in the back. laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, it's, 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 I've done a couple of podcasts. Uh, I did a comic. Um, I need to get some hard furniture out. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, um, very, very quickly before we... Uh, I wanted to... Where are they? That's you. There. Superhero Bar Fight. I got invited to a podcast earlier this week, and I just wanted to give them a shout. They asked if I would uh, say hi. Do it. Um, so uh, Tom and Jamie invited me onto a podcast on Monday. It's available on Podbean, um, or if you just Google uh, Superhero Bar Fight. It basically, Colin, you, I, I was trying to get you to come on with me, and you totally you dingied my question. But basically, I, I sat and chatted to them for about 45 minutes, and it was, you know when you had that, um, you have that fight in the pub? Where you're like, mm. who would win in a fight between so and so and so? That was the yes. podcast, and it was real. It was really really cool. So I had to, who would win in a? Well, well I'll do it quickly with you guys for five minutes. I'll, I'll see if you, <laughs> if you agree. Um, I, I, I get, give Tom and Jamie some free uh, free advertising. Okay, <clears throat> who would win in a fight between the Megazord from the original Mighty Morphin from Power Rangers and Godzilla? <laughs> Ooh, Godzilla. Oh, uh, I would go for Godzilla as well. Yeah, I said Godzilla. Yeah. Um, I had the same conversation with John Irvin, who was a guest in our podcast a couple of weeks ago um, from the uh, the Ghostbusters, um, our Ghostbusters episode, and he was. We had a mad argument about how he reckoned the Megazord would absolutely destroy the Godzilla, but nah, no chance. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think Godzilla would win just because he's the original. Yeah, I mean, I let's face it, Megazord, he has obviously got lots of um, technology at his fingertips. Mm. So yeah, probably ah, it would be a good Godzilla fight. Godzilla would just grab him and take him under the ocean. Yeah, uh, there you go. There you go, exactly. Eat him up. Godzilla uh, would eat him up. The name was uh, Eleven from <laughs> Stranger Things. Who would win between Eleven from Stranger Things or Captain Cold from The Flash? <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> Captain Cold from the Flash. Captain as in Cold the Flash. is just is, is a, bit, yeah, the, 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 he's the a bit of a shite one. enemy, isn't he? Right. He really is, Captain Cold. Did he? Yeah. Is he I the guy that became a good guy? Yeah, that's, that was. I, I reckon we talked about that on the podcast. I um, I read a lot of the Flash comics, and he was always like you say, he was a street level goon in the comics. Yeah. It was only I think because Wentworth Miller did such a really good job of playing him in on the TV series that mm. they made him look like a good guy, and I think. Wentworth Miller saw that he could squeeze one episode into like a full term gig if he did a really good job, and he's the he just chose the scenery in, in the, the Flash. I, I think eleven. Was I still really think. Good. I think eleven, just because yeah. I think eleven. Uh, I, I, I think I Captain Cold is a terrible name. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, I'm checking the other one. Um, Groot versus Poison Ivy. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, uh, well, I think I'd go for Ivy. Groot. Oh, oh, disagreement. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Groot. Oh, no, uh, I, I think, think Groot. I mean, Ivy with her kind of poisons and her, you know, I would, I would she'd, rather be able to infect him. she'd be able to infect <laughs> Groot and, and he wouldn't be able to take <laughs> Groot. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Maxwell says 11 won the last fight, but then uh, Alan Murphy <laughs> Cole gets it all day long. So, this is another <laughs> 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 Um, they clearly got nothing better to do with their time was sitting by watching us getting drunk I, I said Groot because Groot is like a mercenary and um, he's, he's he's total badass um, somebody else some, mm. um, Tom suggested that um, because Poison Ivy can control trees and plants she would have a, like, control of Groot. Be, Groot basically and that would, that would be the end of the fight so um, it was interesting mm. please check out uh, our friends at a superhero bar fight because that's their whole podcast. Is, is... well, I, I'm <laughs> going to check them out straight after this. I'm going to try and go on their show. Um, I mean, well, speaking to your pal Jeff, you know, from uh, the Bruggers, is like <laughs> shameless plug. Yeah. Um, well, that was the whole reason I was there. I was there. To, I was there to chat about uh, the Bruggers and um, and the, my my comic. So it was just nice to have them on board. Um, what uh, is there any? Then else, Colin, you'd like to ask um, David that I haven't covered because we've, we've um, had a yeah, few yeah, I, I, just a little bit. Um, you kind of suggested that um, Glass City would be a location that you might use in other stories. Can you give yeah, us a little absolutely. bit of an idea? Any anything that you've kind of thought up? Any kind of little storyline, just to give us a tease. Yeah. So, 
Um, actually, um, there's one. So, so Glass City is a reference to the violence in the city. So Glass City isn't a city of glass. You know what glassing would be in Glasgow, Scotland. Mm-hmm. Someone knows to be glassed, exactly. So that's that's what Glass City is. Um, so I'm in the middle of kind of writing a story. About five or six years ago, um, Taggart stopped airing on TV. And uh, I love Taggart. So what I'd done was uh, I was bored and I wrote a wee story. Um, I kind of rebooted Jim Taggart, so to speak. And then that has evolved into um, a, a Glass City um, character. And it's basically the storyline of how the city becomes to be known as Glass City. And so I'm hoping to do that one next, whether or not I'll release it in between the three volumes I'm trying to do just now or wait until the until the end and do it. I'm not too sure, but that's certainly in the pipeline. And then one of my first ever characters I created was a guy called Danny Barron. Um, and that's a huge, big uh, storyline. Uh, and that will tie into the, the the story of a missing girl just now. The, the Glass City um, story of the name, I'm going to call it, which is the one with um, based loosely on Jim Taggart. That'll be a total standalone book. Um, but the, the, the story of Danny Bannon ties into the story of a missing girl. Um, so there's a few there's a few ones out there that I'm hoping to to stick in. So look out for the story of a missing girl, which is what I'm doing just now. The story of Danny Bannon and also uh, the story of the name. That's awesome. the, that's the ones I'm really yeah, interested in. It's exciting. Exciting stuff. And there are, there are, some will some will tie in, some some won't. So I, so that's that's the idea. <laughs> When like, there's no time frame, <laughs> there's, there's no there's no time frame for this at all. Ideally, you know, all next year, but I doubt it very much. <laughs> awesome, man! So thank you so much for joining us. It's been really, really yeah, fun. Thanks, Dave. Really Excellent. Good. Thank you for getting well, into the thing as well, because we talk an awful lot of like nonsense sometimes. <laughs> it's just been really well, like, nice like, a, like I journey. said, beer and comics. Amazing. You're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, um, lads. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry, sorry, lads, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. I hope I'll, I'll see you again, I'm sure, at some point soon. Certainly at Comic Con, if not before. Yeah. Will do, Dave. Cheers. No, cheers, lads. Thanks very much. You there, Colin? Well, yeah, I'm here. No, oh, cheers, we're, David. We're I think I'm going to drop David. David's David's left us. That is a shame. Um, thank you so much for joining us, David. Um, I think there was a connection issue on my part, but we're still we're still live, I believe. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, uh, before we go, Colin, is there? Um, um, I noticed somebody mentioned to me that they really enjoy it when we talk about what we've been reading or what we should be checking out, and we haven't done that in ages. So I don't know if you picked up anything this week that you wanted to chat about very briefly. I have nothing new. I've been reading kind of some old comics. Um, and what I've done, what I did do, was revisit this one here, which I uh, got from um, from Jeff a while ago. We did review this before, or Jeff did. Um, we seem to have lost Jeff, but anyway, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm talking about this book here, Jeff Stay. Oh, it's, it's, um, yeah. so this is one that you talked about before a few weeks back or months maybe. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this one back up is because this week is the nominations for the Eisner Awards. So, Will Eisner is a well known um comic writer from yesteryear, um, who's given his name to a, a quite a prestigious comic book award um, and the nominations um, were being voted on in the last week or so, I think today might even be the last day to vote on them um, and there's only a couple of books, there's maybe about 20 books in total that have got nominations in different categories but there's a couple of books in the list that we have mentioned um, in the podcast and this is one of them is Stay, the yeah. other one is Daredevil No yeah, Fear Daredevil uh, written by Chip Zdarsky but um, yeah, so I thought, I would, although I re- read this a while ago, I picked it again and, 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 and reread it this week, just as a quick reminder um, of what it's about. And it is about um, a couple who go on holiday and the husband um, dies suddenly, literally on the first day of their holiday. And the lady 
is left behind and continues to have her holiday. Um, a bit oddly, doesn't yeah. attend the funeral or anything. Um, I'm not going to give too many kind of spoilers away, but it's a really interesting story, really well told, and without and, a lot of do- dialogue as well. Um, certainly, like I, I know I reviewed it. Um, I reviewed it about a year ago, um, and um, maybe a wee bit less, but um, certainly was one of the one of my highlights. I think I shortlisted it in my in my list of favourite books of last year. Mm-hmm. It's really really good. Um, and without blowing our trumpet as well, I'm totally, um, I'm totally glad that some. One of the things, I, I, it's actually quite amazing that we both have brought up a comic of the week up, and both, at least one of each of our nominations made it. But I, I love this book, and I'm really happy that um, it was one of the ones that um, it was, it, it's it's phenomenal. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'm just, I'm just showing these pages because it gives a little bit of a flavour of the artwork and things mm-hmm. and also shows you that some of it is has no dialogue, no yeah. narration at all. Um and this is a, an key and this this happens several times through the book, um, where the lady goes and visits an event or something um in the place that she's on holiday. Yeah. Um and you just get these sort of little snapshots of what it's about and then reactions of like the audience and things that you know yeah. Aren't really so much about her. Um, sometimes the 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 pictures panels are a bit like tourist postcard. Sometimes, yeah, yeah totally. Um, a really interesting story. Um, really, and, and it does does make you think about you know what's going through her head. Yeah, because that yeah, because it is. I I, I totally agree. It is a story about loss, and it's a story about um mental health as well. And there's and then there's mm. just a story. It's it's just a, it's a, a, a it was a fascinating book that I I. I thought it was quite stunning um, and, and really, really moving when I read it. Um, I've not got it to hand because it's actually at my bedside table because I've been reading it. Um, but I think it's I think um, what's it only it only fits the fact that you brought up something that we've talked about before. I've been reading the Dollhouse Family oh, um, yeah. that um, you reviewed last year, probably around about the same time that you re- I reviewed Stay actually, um, and uh, it's great. Um, I've also been reading. Um, I've also been reading a series called Plunge that's by the same Joe Hill. Pardon mm-hmm. the background. My dog's a bit angry, if anyone can hear that. Um, uh, I've been reading, um, so it's the DC Dark Print, is that what it's called? Black Label. Black Label, sorry. Um, in DC Black Label and uh, Joe Hill is is the producer. Am I right? And have I got that kind of mm-hmm. the, the yeah, structure? Right, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. Yep. So that's a really, really, that's a really, really awesome. Um, oh, um, sorry, I've got guests. <laughs> uh, um, I think uh, I think that 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 sort of publishing arm is really good. I, think, I, um, I know Joe Hill. I don't really know too much about Joe Hill, but I do. And I do think that the um, the stories and the things that are that's being produced by that black label at the moment is absolutely is absolutely incredible. I don't go too much into the stories because they are totally. They are totally nuts. There's so much going on, and there's there's so much craziness going on in these books. But they're um, if you're looking for something that's not superheroes, um, but it's still in kind of fairly, fairly safe, capable hands at D- of DC. These are really really cool stories. So, hmm. um, sorry, my house went a bit barmy there for about two minutes. I totally distracted my chat there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, it's really some really really good stuff. Um, it's amazing that we're starting to get comics back as well. So um, that was really. I, I don't know about you, but in the last like four weeks, I've had more comics in my house than I've had in a long, long time, and that's really really <laughs> smart. And the fact that um, sort of distribution line is reopening somewhat is really really cool. Um, yeah, well, I still get my Commando comics subscribed yeah. to them, so I get them every couple of weeks, and. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've also been going down to W. H. Smith, picking up 2000 AD, yeah. and mainly just because you know a lack of comics has been available, mm-hmm. and and I just fancied looking at 2000 AD again. There was a kind of jump on issue a couple of weeks ago with you yeah. know, a whole bunch of stories started, and I think the uh, Judge Dread is getting to an interesting oh, uh, period. It looks as the start of a kind of big epic storyline, yeah. um, which is maybe. Here. Maybe going to lead into then um, the Strontium Dog storyline, which is set in the same universe, but 
you know, sort of 40 years later. Kind of caught up because it's the 43 years of 2018 now. So that, that, that's fascinating. That's mm-hmm. it's it's moving into its own. Uh, it's it's moved into its own future somewhat now. It's quite um, that's quite incredible. Yeah, well, I think uh, Judge Dredd almost follows a real timeline, and mm-hmm. that when it came, first came out, you know, forty odd years ago, um, it's it's kind of followed a, a a real timeline. So what we're reading now is forty years on from the first stories, more yeah. or less. You know, it's kind of about that. Yeah. Yeah, Jackie Healy saying hi, guys. She's late again. So Jackie, Jackie is one of my um, one of my friends. That I met through my wife, and uh, um, Jackie often um, like she put an angry face on one of our podcasts a couple of weeks ago because I think she disagreed with the point we made. But she also put that um, angry face right um quite quite late <laughs> on the, the day. It was like <laughs> four in the morning. And I was like, oh, I wonder what um, I wonder what she disagreed with. So if she remembers. She can tell us now. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I I really want to pick up the new 2008 B stuff. Um, I, I I just finished the 77 this week as well. I really really enjoyed that. Um, it is quite an amazing like achievement that a, a book. It, it's it's a massive scale book that I wasn't quite expecting to be so massive, which I was really really mm-hmm. was impressed by. So um, that was really cool. Um, and I also enjoyed that. Um, I read uh, Bog Bodies that you lent me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we actually had a conversation about that online because I was like, uh, after we went, after we came off the air last week, because I was a bit kind of confused by some of the storyline. So I was like, "Is did I pick this up all right, Colin? Is this what happened?" But um, it was a really, really cool show. It was a really, really cool book that, as I say, reminded me a lot of the film. Um, it was quite thematically similar to In Bruges. This is that kind of black comedy yeah. by um, mm-hmm. with Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, yeah, I had really, the same feeling. That it yeah. was kind of had that that link to in Bruges, but obviously in a completely different setting. Yeah, totally. Um, I've been watching a uh, normal people with my wife, and they uh, so um, it's a show set in Ireland. So I was picking mm-hmm. up a lot of the, the colloquial and the you know I could hear that sort of youthful dialogue and stuff, and the, and, mm-hmm. the, and the tone of the voices and the characters and stuff. Um, <laughs> It was a really, really just that's a really good series. Jackie said that she probably gave us an angry face by accident. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Normal people sounds terrible to me because I don't like anything that's normal. Normal well, storyline. Uh, that was the um, ordinary it, it, everyday things. It's a story about relationships, and it's a story about um, two very different people who fall in love, and right. it becomes quite tricky for them. Based but on forgive me. Balance. It was all right. It was it was okay. I enjoyed it till about it's about twelve. I want to say eleven or twelve episodes long, and they're all yeah. each episode is about twenty five to half an hour, twenty five minutes to half an hour long. So it's not much. So we we binged it in about a week. It did get by. I feel like towards the end, I'm like relationships aren't this hard because like mm-hmm. it, the, the, there was like a will they won't they that kind of went on for ages, and I was like nah, they, they would have willed or wanted by now. But apart from that, <laughs> it was an alright show. Um, but yeah, uh, next week we don't really have a plan yet, do we? I don't think. Um, I don't think so, but um, there, there is something that's come up in the comics world in the, just the last couple of days that might be worth talking about, and I'll, I'll give you till next week to do Work a bit of research you, into it. Um, but the um, allegations of sort of um, predatory grooming um, by certain uh, big characters in the comics industry. Um, has this come to light and there's been a big uh, there's a lot of talk on Twitter in particular about it at the mm-hmm. moment, some allegations come out um, no, which you know, may want to just kind of me. I'd like to go that with an informed kind of a viewpoint and, indeed that's what I'm saying no, let's, let's not talk about it just now and let's, Magic. Cool. Well, um, we, we have do a bit of research and we'll have five minutes next week Magic, cool, brilliant, thank you Kimberly, as always All right. Cheers, later. folks Bye-bye.